Well, as President Biden struggles to improve his approval rating between gaffes and Democratic infighting, First Lady Jill Biden is launching a new attack on former President Donald Trump. She's accusing him of tanking the Senate's border deal, and she's complaining that he is trying to make her husband look bad, saying, quote, you see what happened today with the border, and now Trump is trying to do everything he can to make Joe look bad. You know, even at the lives, sacrificing lives of so many people, just for his own political gain. Now, she said that in Texas, and I guess we could be relieved she didn't at least compare, say, Latinos are as unique as breakfast tacos. She said that when she was in San Antonio, Texas. So <laughs> she apologized for that, didn't do that again. Instead, she tried the new tack of Donald Trump is to blame here, except that's not true, Tammy, because Trump didn't get her husband to have a 68 percent <laughs> disapproval on the border, a record low, according to CBS. Yeah, and I'm just amazed, though, about how much power Donald Trump has. He has more power than Joe Biden. He can influence the Senate. He's in control of the images of other people. Mm. He has everything except a, a special magic wand. So there is the First Lady of the United States effectively telling people that her husband is so ineffective and so uninvolved that Donald Trump, bad MAGA king, is running the country right now. So that's the nature. Of, on one hand, wow. he's supposed to be knowing what he's doing and everything is just fine. And on the other hand, Donald Trump is punching him in the nose every single day. Well, which, which man do you want running the country, right? The one who's in charge or the one who's not. But clearly now, this if we didn't have the Internet and people were not informed, this is almost like the 60s, right? You can create a reality based on a narrative because people hear you on the news and just you and Walter Cronkite. They seem to not know <laughs> oh that, well, it's, it's uh, you know, Harris Faulkner's here. Kayla McEnany's here. Walter Cronkite is gone. Mm -hmm. And so now we have real conversations and we know that that's a lot of bunk. It is. And, you know, Harris, it is interesting to watch her in kind of that attack mode. It was interesting. The Daily Mail, and these are their words, they described her as the attack dog on the campaign trail. And look, she's a, she's a decent surrogate for the president, I would argue. I watched her in an MSNBC interview. But I'm interested to see, I mean, the first lady in attack mode, we didn't really see that with first lady Melania Trump. It will be well, interesting to watch. I, I don't know how much she really wants to jump into politics. They're pretty mm -hmm. fierce and divided right now. And mm -hmm. some of that fierceness and division starts in her own party. Mm -hmm. the far oh, left of absolutely. her own party. So I don't know how far, like, is she going to go talk to the Muslim crowd that's upset with her president and calls him Genocide Joe mm -hmm. because of his mm -hmm. decisions to, to do what the right thing is, and that is to support Israel and its fight against Hamas savages? I mean, is she going to jump into that? Because it might take that. But when you talk about how inflated she has made uh, one man's power over the actual man in office. It might explain why a couple of days ago the president in one of his gaffes said sitting President Trump <laughs> because maybe they have that conversation so much at home that Jill has pounded into him. Yeah. You know, he's actually the president, right. Joe. Hmm. Interesting. You know, and I, I do want to point out this New York Times op-ed, David. Yeah. This was Chris Whipple. He wrote an op-ed, and it's about Joe Biden winning the election and how he could beat Trump. And he says this, Joe Biden has yet to explain clearly why he's running for a second term. I've reached this conclusion after speaking with more than a dozen ex-presidential campaign managers, top political strategists. The campaign will be more successful if it lets Joe be Joe and talk the way he actually talks. So I guess he wants to get rid of the Easter bunny that had to hop over and keep <laughs> Joe from talking. Well, <laughs> the president can rest assured tonight the first lady is still by his side in this yeah. election, which can't be said of all Democrats. I mean, let's think about this for a mm. second. Go back to 2016. President Obama picked Hillary Clinton over Joe Biden to be their nominee in 2016. You now actively have members of the Obama administration attacking Joe Biden, including David Axelrod, who is suggesting that maybe it's time for Biden to move on. The Biden coalition has fallen apart. And the key groups that helped get him elected are now questioning. And why is all this happening? Because it is Joe Biden's policies. Americans can say, exactly what they don't like about Joe Biden, whether it be the border security, whether it be his causing inflation to get worse. Americans can say exactly why they don't like him. And it's also why you hear Donald Trump all the time talking about securing the border and energy policy. Every speech he talks about, he talks about issues that he knows Joe Biden is vulnerable on.
Yeah, Kennedy, there was an interesting point, I will say, that Chris Whipple made in this New York Times op-ed, and I think it's spot on. It's just an interesting historical comparison. It was from 2012 when Clinton gave a speech at the DNC, the Democrat National Convention, on behalf of Obama, and he said Clinton said this. Here's the challenge he faces. A lot of Americans are still angry and frustrated about this economy. If you look at the numbers, you know employment is growing, banks are beginning to lend again, but too many people do not feel it yet. The point he was making is sometimes you have to acknowledge inflation is bad, the economy is not great, here's what I'll do to fix it. And we never hear that from Joe Biden. No, and what happens is reality bites them in the keister. And I think you're absolutely right. Uh, it, people are sophisticated. We do have a 24-hour everything cycle. Mm -hmm. It's not just mm -hmm. news. Mm -hmm. People have access to this information always. The mm -hmm. most important information they have access to is how they are feeling and how the economy is affecting them. And when they're being condescended to and then when, mm -hmm. when they are being lied to, they no longer trust the people in power. Mm -hmm. And to Tammy's point, this is such an incredibly outdated model. You know, people are just getting the the paper at eight in the morning going well there's the news I'm gonna be on with my day and ignore everything else they are bombarded with constant facts and they're doing such a horrible job of reacting to it uh, the most dignified reaction they could give people is being honest with them I was there I was it so was Harris we were at that speech at the DNC at the convention in yeah. 2012 and you know it was at a time when Clinton was still very powerful when he had gravitas and I mean now he's just an absolute nutcase no one listens to a word he says but the sentiment is absolutely accurate but look what they're mm -hmm. doing in foreign policy that clip we saw from Jake Sullivan saying you know nothing to see here the Middle East is completely calm and same with Mayorkas like the border is secure <laughs> stop lying to people yeah. you wow. can't you can't hide the interest rates you can't hide the high housing prices you can't hide the $20 chicken that's what I purchased in the grocery store yesterday unreal did it cook itself <laughs> no nope, I had to cook it and it was $20 <laughs> crazy Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.